Hi guys, this is Petty Beige Cosplay, and today I'm going to be showing you how to turn this uh, Coscraft Charlie wig into one of these fluffy, uh, monstrous messes that I absolutely adore making. I'm personally using this wig for Nawa Kakuro from Your Turn to Die, but you can use it for so many characters. Anyway, this is pretty much everything you'll need. So we've got a wig head and a clamp. I like to use these fabric ones because I find they're a lot easier to pin wigs into, I find they're more sturdy, and I don't know, it's what I used at college, so I got used to them. You will also want to uh, have a hairbrush and a comb for uh, brushing and sectioning the wig. You can tell that I'm a Danganronpa cosplayer because everything I own is covered in this pink paint. Hair clips and hair bands are also really helpful in this situation because they can help to section the wig and just keep everything where you want it to be so it's not just hair flopping around everywhere. Wig pins or sewing pins are really helpful for attaching the wig to the wig head. I like to use those ones with the little colourful bobbles on the end because then they don't get lost in the wig later. Hairspray is obviously a must for this type of wig. I, like every other cosplayer on the planet, like to use the Got To Be Glued Freeze Spray. I just think it's pretty neat. It's always worked really well for me, and you only need to spray a little bit from a distance uh, to really get the full effect. I think my lungs are full of it by now. For this method, you'll also need hair crimpers. You don't need these for styling wigs in general, but I find they're really good for adding extra volume and really assists in the whole teasing process. Hair straighteners, again, are not entirely necessary, but I use them in this method. I just think it evens out some of the bits that are a bit too crimped at the end. And even though I completely forgot to put them on the table, you will also need a pair of scissors, preferably a really sharp pair of scissors. You will also obviously need your wig. Uh, this is the wig I am using completely unstyled. It is a Charlie from Coscraft in the colour Fuchsia, and it's a really nice long wig that has a lot of... Um, layers and stuff which is going to help add volume. Uh, also the important thing, and this is why I choose a lot of Coscraft wigs, is they are heat resistant, so they are going to work for the crimpers. I know this will seem obvious to most of you, but if you don't use heat resistant wigs, your wig will melt when you apply heat to it. So at this point you can see I'm actually beginning to section the wig. Uh, I use the wefts as a guideline for when I'm sectioning a wig. I'd say a good combination for crimping is two or three wefts uh, in little inch long chunks. I've also got my crimpers set to a medium high heat. I think it really depends on the type of crimpers you've got. Uh, I don't think mine go very high so I can get away with a higher setting. Whereas if you've got some really nice fancy ones I imagine it will go up to like a billion degrees and you'll probably want to keep it at a medium setting. Either way the best thing to do is actually take a small strand test. So take a little strand from the back and uh, just try crimping that. See if it's fine. You know if it basically take it from a point that if it does melt the hair off uh, it's not going to impact the wig too badly. Um, I did not do that here because I have worked with these crimpers and these wigs before and I know, you know, what, what they can get away with. Anyway, now begins the uh, thankless and very uh, elongated task of just crimping the whole wig. Uh, so I'll probably just whack on some music for a bit, speed it up, you know, stop rambling.
throw your cranes up. styling process of it. Uh, I start on the fringe usually just because I think it's a really good place to start and a really good uh, base point as that's where the main focus of most wigs are. You can also see here that I am pulling up a reference photo for what I want the hair to look like. I'm not going to be copying her hair exactly but I do want it to have the same feel to it and I want the fringe to be very similar so reference photos are very nice to work from. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking a small section from the top of this spike and I'm straightening it. This is so that the individual spikes have more definition and they don't all blur into one fuzzy mess. This part of the wig needs trimming, but the way I'm doing that is I'm brushing it out, holding it all together so it's straight, and then I'm chopping into the wig in a sort of vertical motion. Uh, if you do a sort of horizontal along the line thing, that's very nice if you want straight bangs, but unfortunately it makes the wig very blocky and makes it very difficult to do these spikes as there's no feathering in it. I'm not going to lie, I'm not a hairdresser, I don't know the appropriate terms for all these things, but I, th I think you can, you know, see what I'm getting at. So here I'm lightly spraying the section that I'm now spiking, uh, putting a little bit extra on the tip and then shaping that section sort of with my hands, twiddling around the ends, blah blah blah, blah uh, almost as if I was like moulding clay or something. honestly just a lot of the same but I'm going to be uh, back combing these sections so they can just have that extra volume and the, the wig just builds up. Honestly at this point it's just building the wig higher and higher. I didn't quite get this bit on camera, uh, I didn't realise the camera was positioned so low, but for the ahoge, pretty sure I uh, mispronounced that, but what you want to do is literally just back comb the bottom loads, um, but you want to make sure that you're not taking too big of a chunk of hair, and you want to make sure when you're hairspraying it that you're not taking, you're not applying too much hairspray, otherwise it'll weigh it down and it'll end up falling. Thank you. 
Now, I actually didn't want to cover the whole wig in these spikes, because I really like the fun, fluffy uh, crimped effect that was going on. So this is just me uh, separating out into sections and just backcombing at the roots so we can just give it even more volume, because, you know, apparently we need more of that. So here we have what I'm calling the finished wig. Uh, I actually believe you should come back to a wig a few days after you've originally styled it so you can get a new perspective on it. But you know, it's big, it's fluffy, it's spiky and it's what I wanted it to be. I'm really pleased with how this turned out so uh, thank you very much for watching my first attempt at a YouTube video. Please like and subscribe and let me know if there's any other tutorials that you'd like me to do. Bye!